Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri Sane, or you can also call me Mr. Insane. Well, recently Jim Carrey has been getting a good amount of praise for his new TV series titled Kidding. And for the looks of the first episode, it is impressive. But I'm not going to review that show since there are more episodes for yet to be released. For now, I made a promise that I was going to review all of Jim Carrey's movies by starting with his early works. Since I already reviewed his first TV movie, Rubber Face, today we're going to review his other Canadian movie. No, not that one. Although I did make a promise that I wasn't going to review that one. No, I'm talking about his most obscure of his works, titled Copper Mountain, A Club Made Experience. The story centers around these two guys, played by Jim Carrey and Alan Thicke, who are going on a ski resort to have fun. With Jim Carrey's character, he's planning on trying to score with some women, while Alan Thicke's character is planning on trying to compete on a ski competition. And... Actually, that's mostly it. While I did mention before that Rubberface was criticized for being a terrible movie, I personally didn't thought it was that bad. Copper Mountain, on the other hand, it's a little hard to defend since it is definitely not a good movie. Since if you actually noticed when I was telling the story, one of the problems of this film is that it doesn't have a good focus on the narrative. I mean, usually we go back and forth on Jim Carrey and Alan Thicke, but mostly on the 50% or probably 70% of this movie, we usually get to focus on and, and just shots of people skiing or just seeing them in ski lift chairs but most likely is watching the best known singers like Rita Coolidge and Ronnie Hawkins singing on stage so do you know how many people criticize on Adam Sandler comedies that they're only having an excuse to make a movie just so they can go on a vacation well that's what this movie feels like it. It feels like a home video showing it to your family and friends and they get easily bored like in half of the video. Like this film feels like a, a combination of a home video movie or a concert movie and even a story and characters that don't even have that good character development to begin with. Speaking of which, let's talk about Jim Carrey. As I mentioned before, his character's goal is to seduce women. The only problem is that he doesn't know how to speak right with women. So when he's around with girls, he most likely just do impersonations and being quirky as usual with Jim Carrey and jumping at jacuzzis and going into girls locker room, which does happen and it's sort of kind of funny. The thing about his humor in this film is that it feels like it should belong into a stand-up routine more so than in a movie with a narrative. I mean like doing those Sammy Davis Jr. impersonations again like it could be funny but it's just not enough it just comes out of nowhere and at the very end of the movie he does get women by doing a quirky clumsy ski routine which that's mostly it which is funny because Jim Carrey does play this type of character afterwards in a much better story and character development and you can make an argument that he's the best part of this movie, but he's not enough to save it. Alan Thicke's storyline, again, is most usually just trying to compete onto this ski competition, but he also does talk with women and he does get some, but again, strangely enough, is even less interesting and more dull than Carrie's story arc. It's kind of funny how I came across with this movie because I was 14 and I went to Walmart and I saw this DVD cover with Jim Carrey's face on it. And of course, being a Jim Carrey fan, I bought it and I went to see if it's hilarious. And when I saw it, I didn't get it. And looking at it now, I can totally see why. It also comes false advertising saying that it's one of the one of his funniest films. And I don't consider it to be one of his funniest films, like his most popular movies, so 
bad advertising. There's also a few characters in this movie, but we hardly focus on them, nor I don't even remember any of their names. The cinematography has such low quality, and the editing feels very, very clunky. Like it feels like one of those birthday videos that I watch, except that it's probably even worse. Well, maybe not worse, but again, I personally would do better editing than this movie does. Like the whole experience just felt bored. In conclusion, this is definitely not one of Jim Carrey's finest works. It was dull with a messy storyline, not great character development, and it was all filled with, with popular singers just singing songs on stage. And in a whole expand of 60 minutes long of this movie. So yeah, it was bad, but I don't consider it to be hateful. I mean, I'm looking at some of the reviews and ratings and people despise this movie. I mean, I don't hate it, in all honesty, I hate other movies that get better praising than this movie. So that's something. So yeah, definitely one of Jim Carrey's lowest films, although not considered to be the worst picture of the year war movie. Well, that's it for all of Jim Carrey's early Canadian movies. Next time we're looking at Jim Carrey going to Hollywood movies by starting with a few supporting roles in the 80s era. And, whoa, well, we're already near October. Man, that was fast. And I'll be perfectly honest that I do have plans on doing a Jim Carrey review on October. Which one? Well, you'll see when I get there. But for now, that's it for today. So I'll see you into the next review. See you later.